The beam splitter is a crucial component of the interferometer, responsible for splitting a single light beam into three. While it is essentially a simple glass plate, I believe that viewers interested in replicating the device will benefit from more detailed information. Therefore, this video covers material selection, cutting, and grinding. Additionally, the function of the beam splitter is demonstrated for differently polarized input beams. The 3D model shows the simple shape of this component. It is 22 by 13 by 6 millimeters in size. The beam splitter is made from a sheet of float glass. To ensure the glass is of decent quality, a simple setup built from a common red laser diode is used. The setup uses interference between the front and back surface of the tested glass sheet to visualize variations in thickness. The example you see here is produced by a low quality glass sheet with noticeable surface distortions. In contrast, the second example shows a glass sheet of good quality with circular diffraction rings. The various patterns you may encounter using this technique are summarized here, which should help you assess the quality of a given glass sheet. After a good quality glass sheet of about 6 mm in thickness is selected, a thin strip is cut off using a glass cutter. Note that glass cutters are sold with varying cutting thickness ranges, which affect the edge angle of the cutting wheel. Be sure to select a cutter suitable for 6 mm thickness. Most common cutters will be appropriate for this task. A small wire can be used to start the crack and break off the strip. Another cut is made to separate the blank for the beam splitter. Using a small 3D printed contraption can help with this task. At least two blanks will be needed for the interferometer. One for the beam splitter and another for mounting one of the Kerner cube reflectors. However, I recommend cutting a few spare blanks. To bring the blanks to the required size, a couple of 3D printed grinding jigs will be used. With these jigs the grinding process is quite easy. Note that small geometric deviations will not affect the performance of the interferometer, so while this step is theoretically optional, it is highly recommended. A rubber strip is glued onto the clamp to hold the glass securely in place. In the first step, the width of the blank is reduced to 13.6 millimeters. A common diamond whetstone is required for this process. Note that grinding glass should be done underwater. You can stop when the 3D printed jig makes full contact with the whetstone, which will be indicated by a reduction in the grinding sound.
The first surface is now straight and perpendicular to the two primary surfaces, serving as a reference for the next steps. These steps follow the same principle using the jigs for the displayed dimensions. When all four sides are done, the edges can be chamfered by hand. According to the 3D model from the beginning, one edge gets a larger chamfer. Here you can see the final beam splitter. Note that the small chipped edges do not pose a problem for the operation. A small demonstration shows how the beam is split, once for each of the two surfaces, resulting in three beams in total. For the project, a laser diode is used as the light source, which emits strongly polarized light. It is well known that the polarization of the incoming light affects the splitting ratio for an uncoated glass surface. This effect is illustrated in the diagram, which shows the reflectivity of glass surfaces for horizontally and vertically polarized light as a function of the incident angle. In the interferometer, splitter is used at a 45 degree angle. As shown, there is already a significant difference in reflectivity at this point. In practice, this means that the laser diode needs to be rotated correctly to maximize reflectivity. For demonstration purposes, the incident angle is now adjusted to the Brewster angle, at which no p-polarized light is reflected. As a final note, I would like to mention that within the interferometer, each relevant light path includes exactly one reflection at the beam splitter. As a result, both the reference beam and the measurement beam are attenuated equally, leading to good fringe contrast at the detectors.